Have you ever said to yourself, I'm in the zone while playing a video game? The optimal anxiety effect in gaming. It's a concept where science meets gaming. We'll talk about it, we'll define it, and we'll see how it affects game design and impacts the current pro circuit and casual and mobile industry marketplace. So what is the optimal anxiety effect and how does it relate to gaming? As defined by scientists, optimal anxiety or competitive anxiety is the level of anxiety present in a person in which the person is motivated to succeed yet not so anxious that performance takes a dive. This moderate amount of anxiety keeps people on their toes, enables them to juggle multiple tasks and puts them on high alert for potential problems. You can see in this graph on your screen right now. It's not hearsay. This is scientific theory and it's been proven by studies with huge sample sizes in science. It's sometimes referred to as the anxiety sweet spot. Scientists have proven that too much anxiety can hinder performance. On the flip side though, the right amount of anxiety and stress can actually be positive enhancers for performance, especially during gaming. We use them as performance indicators as anxiety and performance correlate positively up into a peak or the sweet spot. A little anxiety may be just what you need to focus your efforts and perform at your peak during those challenging or online games. But why does this happen? Anxiety blends the fear of loss with an elevated sense of alertness. When you're under stress, the endorphins in your body rise to match your heightened state of anxiousness. You become more alert, more focused too. Some people call it being in the zone. But where is the sweet spot? And how can we tie it back to gaming? It's up to the individual, but we can often feel it when we play competitive or challenging games. Ever lean forward while playing a game? Do your hands ever get clammy when you're holding a controller? Do you ever sweat while you play or yell or scream into the TV? On a more grandiose scale, how about the pro gamers who are on camera with shaking hands, fidgeting in their seats from the stress of the crowds at Madison Square Garden? It's all stress, big or small, and it affects us and our performance while we play. The right amount of it will make us better players, and it's good to be aware of it. And now that we've defined optimal anxiety, let's trace it back to gaming and how it relates to challenging game design and the historical view on total game design. If you've watched my video on the evolution of video game difficulty, you'll know that, in the early days of gaming, video games were designed to be difficult to compensate for lack of memory on game cartridges. Mechanics were limited due to technology, and when you combine that with the fact that our controllers had only two to six buttons, games were hard. But they felt rewarding as a result when you mastered one. Games were stressful, yes, and due to the nightmarish challenge of some of them, the anxiety levels were also higher in association. Because anxiety drives engagement, completing a game like Ghost and Ghouls felt like climbing Mount Everest. But it was possible because stress got us to a point where we could perform at our bests. But in today's market, gamers have more tools and information at their disposal. We have tons of buttons on our controllers and keyboards, unlimited tutorials, walkthroughs, character online builds, all you have to do is Google anything these days, and the performance improvement of our games, nearly standardized to 60 frames per second, means that games are overall easier than they used to be, less demanding and potentially less rewarding too. It's easy to see how the casual gaming market seems to be blending in with mainstream gaming because of our increased efficiencies as gamers. Not only, but because developers have figured out that they can make more money by dumbing down their games to appeal to larger markets, once again it feels like games are just super easy these days, and super intuitive too, and easy to get into due to increases of performance, technology, and user interfaces. You better believe the mobile and casual gaming markets have capitalized on this trend. And if you aren't aware, the mobile gaming market accounts for more revenue than any other gaming market. Mobile games are sometimes full of fluff, challenge is almost completely absent, and gamers act with a throwaway mentality for their purchases. As such, so many games are being developed that fight with the idea that games are at their best when there's some challenge and stress involved. The result? It's harder to be fully mentally engaged in video games in today's market with all this nonsense around us. So how do you get engaged in lieu of all this? Two ways. Choose to play challenging games with deep mechanics or play competitive online games. With challenging video games, the keyword is engagement because they're digital. 
thus engagement is a two-way street. The game has to be challenging, interesting, and demand a decent amount of mental engagement from the player, while the gamer has to be open to the idea of challenge and improvement. If both streets cross, it's a beautiful thing. Think back to Mario 3 and the moment-to-moment -moment mental engagement demanded from the game. Things were interesting, mechanics were fresh, and more importantly than anything, it was quite challenging to the common player. If you went in with an open mind, Mario 3 could be very stimulating, and many of the later levels gave us that optimal sense of anxiety. Competitive online games are a different flavor of ice cream altogether. On the big stage, professional players have to deal with a lot of stress and anxiety. The crowds, the noise, the pressure of being benched, the need to win as your bank account depends on it, it all adds up and gives them the ability to perform at such high levels. But sometimes, the stress can be too great to bear. This is when performance plummets. Many players combat this by taking performance enhancing drugs. Adderall is the common culprit, and doping up on these little orange pills can help reduce the anxiety level present in stressful situations, enough to where it falls back to being manageable. But you don't have to be a professional to find your optimal anxiety in competitive gaming. The trick is to get to the point to where you're fully engaged by giving yourself a good challenge. Test your limits, get outside of your comfort zone in that little box you've built up for yourself, and get off the websites. Carve your own path, make your own builds, and customize your own gameplay, and personalize it too. As for our participation, it's an exercise of control and self-discipline, as evident by the rampant toxicity in MOBA and first-person shooter online communities. Mr. Atkins had to get literally dunked on. The fact that this jungler is the worst player I've ever seen, in fact, he's so bad that you can't even really call him a human being at all. He's just kind of a brainless sack. Are they doing dragon yet? Losing a fucking game where the mid was fucking AFK, you're behind. You guys are so fucking retarded. It's not easy. Just be nice. Stay engaged with meaningful challenge and ride the fine line between anxiety and your own performance inside and outside the real world with your personal and professional life. You'll succeed more, feel more intrinsically motivated, and be more engaged in the people around you. Anyway, that's it for today. I really hope you appreciate this really interesting topic. I find it fascinating myself. And if you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe or reno button. Really appreciate the support for the channel. We'll see you guys next time.